the gun now so that he's going to kill himself and any law enforcement that show up. In a job that can make you a target. Trooper Noel must keep the odds in his favor. I'm going to try to get him to come out. He said it's 22 out now. Back up, back up, back up. And when hunters don't play by the rules... Okay, probably blast it right out of that tree. Wildlife trooper John Simeon must track him down. If you look at these tracks right here, I mean, it looks like somebody got out. And when a drunk driver defies the law... What's your name? I'm your business. Follow my finger there. I'm not even going to try. He gets a one-way ticket to jail. He's going to have one hell of a hangover. From the wild streets to the open wild. We need you to track him. Yeah, I'll be your cover. This is Alaska State Troopers. Stop, you are not. Stand still. You make it fit. Trooper Jared Noel is heading straight into the eye of a storm. We've got a couple people in a disturbance over some child custody. They were contacted earlier and told the situation was going to have to be resolved in uh, civil court. Apparently, didn't want to accept that answer. Now we got uh, three units in route. And this child custody case is threatening to turn violent. Male on 21 who lives at the residence stating he has a knife and that he's highly trained military personnel and deadly force stating he will defend himself in his heartbeat. There are multiple people in a vehicle now approaching the house. So now we're getting a report that the house is surrounded and they're trying to escalate things. So one of the individuals on scene has said that he is armed with a knife and that he is highly trained in the use of the knife. Troopers race to the scene, but the busy Matsu Valley traffic makes for a tense ride. Right now it's uh, kind of rush hour, but uh, we're going to try to get there as quickly as we can. It's getting a little clogged up. We're still about three miles out. Three miles that can make all the difference. But before troopers can get to the house... The suspects take off. We have an idea on Bogart now. Do we have a vehicle description other than Silver? Yeah, the vehicle has left the scene now, and the closest unit is pulling up into the neighborhood. I got the vehicle at 1036. A trooper intercepts the fleeing suspects ahead. And he's stopping it now. Noel races to back him up. Noel arrives just in time to help Trooper Neil Miner detain the other suspect still in the car. You got the car. Presumed armed and dangerous. You got the driver, you got a friend. Passenger, step out of the vehicle with your left hand, open the door. With your left hand, open the door. Do it now. Front passenger with your left hand, open the door. With your left hand, open the door from the outside. Turn around. Drop the phone. Walk backwards to the sound of my voice. On your knees. Cross your ankles. They're careful, all right. Making sure it's not an ambush. Since we had the information that they were possibly armed with knives and highly trained in the execution of that, we had to take that threat very seriously when approaching the vehicle. I think the clear, clear trunk. Clear. Off gun. Back on 45, got two detained. They've got every suspect. Now, Trooper Knowles after every detail of what went down. Is this about the baby? Okay, it's we're... about the baby. Why did you guys go up to the house? Um, she just called me saying the baby had been kidnapped. So, any kind of confrontation happened at the house? He just came outside and knocked on the window and said, can I help you with anything? And she rolled on the window and said, not much. Sure. But I can't do that. And she rolled up the window. Okay. These women were helping the father confront the mother and her boyfriend about custody. But they fled when the troopers were called. Who had the knife? What knife? That's a good answer. I didn't even know there was Nobody had a knife? No. Okay. Is 41 headed over to the res? Yeah. The complainant confirms there was no fight. We can just past these people because they got no, no business being over there. Troopers warn both women they're not allowed back on the property and urge them to settle this in court. The homeowner did express that they didn't want those people back again, so they're criminally trespassed for life. It's a custody issue, and it's a shame that, you know, it gets to this level, but... 
But Noel's day of domestic discord is just getting started. Dispatch reports another unhappy home across town. We're headed to a uh, residence we've been to multiple times. The male has a gun now, so he's going to kill himself and any law enforcement that show up. But he's not alone. There are two women in the house as well who could become targets if troopers can't get there quick. The plaintiff stating she just heard a click. She believes the male has the 32 and he shut the bedroom door. Male dealing death by cops in the background right now. The same as a police officer comes to the house and kills them. Death by cop are three words no trooper wants to hear. It means the suspect's ready to die at the hands of law enforcement. Everybody's intoxicated. You know, there's also firearms involved, so it's definitely an extremely dangerous situation. Troopers meet on scene, but the house is barely visible, obscured by trees. So they form a makeshift perimeter around the deeply wooded, fully loaded residence. He has two rifles in his bedroom. Last time we were here. I'm going to go grab a long gun since he's got a rifle. Just let me know if you see any movement. He's uh, barricaded himself in there with the firearms, so I'm going to try to get him to come out. Where are the girls at? There's no word from the women inside. So troopers try to talk the man down by phone, if he's sober enough to reason with. You're not going to step out? Well, I'm just trying to talk to you and figure out what's going on. And why would you think we're going to do that? I don't on the phone with him right now, but he's agitating and refusing to come out. He said that he has a rifle, so I'm not going to take any chance. Suddenly, the line goes dead. I have 45, any luck with that 21? Turn it on all the shades, turn off all the lights. And there's movement inside the house. Back up, back up, back up. He could have the troopers in his sight. These windows facing us are the living room. I can't see the windows too well, but I got the front door. Trooper Noel heads into the woods for a better vantage point. It's a tricky spot. He's got his 22 out now. You want to hold that right here? I've got eyes on the front door. Finally, the female hostages sneak out of the house. I'm trying to secure the uh, two female witnesses in that car so that they've got some level of safety down the road. But the estranged girlfriend has unfinished business. Honestly, I'm not asleep. Why do you want to keep my house? That's all I want. Uh, my turtles in there, my t-shirts are in there. Troopers don't want a gunfight. They convince the women to leave and decide to wait until tomorrow to question the man after he's had a chance to sleep it off. The next day, troopers get a tip the suspects passed out and make a peaceful arrest. Hi, how are you? Right, let's go ahead and walk up to that window over there. I've been... I've been... Yeah, it's not good. I didn't do it. It makes it safer for the community around him. He's not going to be drunk in his house with his, with his rifle threatening to sh shoot everybody that walks past. I personally have been there about five times in the, in the past month. They book him for multiple counts of assault. Now he's facing several years behind bars. They took me on a DV. This Let's go. You hear me? I got it. All right, bro. What could have been a violent standoff ends calmly. But troopers don't always get so lucky. It's early Thursday morning. Right, back my team. And trooper Darren Cooper's patrolling the Matsu Valley's dark streets. Here, in one of the most densely populated regions of the state, no patrol is routine. Last Friday, we had a trooper stop a vehicle. And subsequently, a passenger in that vehicle shot our trooper. On a late night stop. How's it going? Why don't you shut your truck out so I can actually hear you? Trooper Andrew Ballesteros took two bullets. It was the eighth trooper-involved shooting of 2012, more than the past two years combined. Our trooper, he was hit twice in the head. Luckily, he was not seriously injured. Trooper Ballesteros cheated death, but the gunman wasn't finished. He was found just a mile from the scene, dead from a self-inflicted gunshot. Unfortunately, it gives us that reminder that these things do happen. There are people that will hurt us. So it, it puts us on edge. And that edge continues tonight. ATC Sports Center headed toward Westland. Uh-oh. That's right where we're at. Continuing vehicles, the yellow jeep swerving all over the road, spin 180 in front of the complainant. A concerned citizen reports an out-of-control driver careening down one of the area's busiest highways. 
We received a report of a ready, which means report every dangerous driver immediately. The yellow Jeep had a intoxicated driver and had flipped a uh, U-turn or a Brody in the middle of the road. This might be him. I'm out that vehicle in the middle of the road uh, by hire. The brazen driver pauses to give Trooper Cooper a one-finger salute. He's flipping me off out of the driver's side window there. Then he bolts. Uh, he's not stopping. Uh, he's not stopping. Trooper Cooper's pursuing a reckless driver. Break, back on my When he suddenly pulls to a stop. Who knows what this guy is going to do? He sees me, I'm right there, and he's flipping me off. But backup is still five minutes out, and Cooper must approach this erratic man alone. Hey, driver! 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 Show me your hands real quick. Hey, stop out of the car for me. Driver! Show me your hands real quick. Show me both your hands. There you go. Get out of the middle of the road. Out of the middle of the road. Hey, out of the road. There you go. There you go. Stop. Hey, I'm gonna pat you down, okay? Bring your hands and smile your back. Hey, what's your name? None of my business. Why is it none of my business? You can keep patting me up. And I'm just making sure you don't have any guns on you. No, I wish I did, but I don't. Why do you wish that you had a gun on you? Don't worry about it. All right, go ahead and uh, turn around for me and talk to me. What's your name? None of your business. Okay. We're going we're gonna to play that game today? No, I don't really feel like uh, playing along. Either I have my name or I don't. I don't, I don't. You can be a or you can't. Well, I'm not trying to be a now, someone called us up and said you were doing donuts, so you flipped a, uh, a 180. Donuts, that's uh, totally not true. Whatever. Not true? Well, what bar are you at tonight? It doesn't matter. Okay. But you're at a bar. Yes, no, maybe so. No? Yeah, my is hard as... That's gross. There's no point in arguing with you. You guys, you guys are... You're, you're full of... It's me against you. Okay. Why don't you just sit tight on your bumper? So the other trooper gets here. There you go. Oh, is, is the brake that on? Don't Where's it in gear? Hang tight for me right here. Hang tight for me right here. Right, Let go of my arm. Let go of my arm. Hang tight for me. The man's a handful. Backup arrives just in time. I mean, this dude is hammered. You're killing me here, man. I'm trying to hang on. You're just going in the handcuffs right now because you're acting a little fishy here. I'm trying to make sure your Jeep doesn't roll away like you were just doing. Okay? That's all I'm trying to do. But I have too much <laughs> muscle mass. You have too much muscle mass? To pull my Jeep away. You do look like you go to the gym. Trooper Cooper discovers several empty beer cans. But this guy's probably not on his way to the recycling center. Y'all relax, man. Y'all relax. Enjoy yourselves. A trooper with the Bureau of Highway Patrol tries to get the belligerent man to focus long enough for a field sobriety test. What I want you to do is I want you to follow my finger with your eyes only, okay? Keep your head still. Why the f*** are like cops? You're all a bunch of Not even gonna try that? I'm drunk, I admit. Okay, well I so appreciate that. No, Let's just try two more passes here. Can you do two? No, it doesn't even just follow my finger there. I'm not even gonna try it. Fair enough. Let's, let's, let's go take a walk. Let's go back to my car. You're under arrest tonight for driving under influence. The man blows a point three, nearly four times the legal blood alcohol limit. Anything your pockets gonna stick in there, poke me? I hope so. I hope so. I wish I had a shotgun. I wish you had a shotgun. That's kind of an interesting statement. He's fairly drunk tonight. We're glad to get him off the road. On the way to the processing center, he attempted to slip his cuffs and lay down in the back and began to kick the window. Very lucky that there's no one else on the roadway for him to run into. He's gonna have one hell of a hangover. 140 miles east, acting wild takes a different form. Alaska's Copper River Valley is a hunter's paradise, boasting some of the largest concentrations of big game animals in the world. Oh, I got him. Oh, there's a big herd of caribou right there. 
maybe 60 in the group. But hunters in the U.S. and Canada also shoot 1,000 people accidentally each year. So veteran wildlife trooper John Simeon knows that chasing game on the last frontier is no game. We've received several complaints in regards to hunters being a little unsafe out on the McCarthy Road. A caller reports someone hunting while on the highway. A violation of the law. It's really dangerous shooting on from or across the road. You know, a 22 bullet goes out a mile. Ricochets off the ground, goes down the road. You know, it's a deadly round. Deadly and illegal. To catch unlawful hunters in the act, troopers set up stings in the field using animal decoys. Give it more broadside. That's good. Today's game is small, but the stakes are high. We're going to deploy a decoy grouse. As you can see, a few of them have been shot before. This one's been shot a lot of times. Got a couple of feathers still left on them. With one hunting fatality already on the books this year in Alaska, the bullet-riddled grouse could prevent accident number two. We want to get out there before the grouse hunters get out there, have a decoy set up so that if there are illegal hunters out there, they're not going to see us in the field. Simeon and Trooper Dan Dahl head out in the pre-dawn darkness to bag some lawbreakers. Holy moly! We're going to have snow on our grouse. But the first big snow of the Alaskan winter catches them by surprise. This will complicate their covert mission. 6.30 in the morning now, we're going to try and get out on site by 8. We're trying to be inconspicuous. We're trying not to get seen. We do have, you know, maybe two to four inches of snow on the ground, so if people can follow our tracks, it makes it pretty easy for them to know somebody else is out. It makes our job a little harder. As dawn breaks, they near their target and the most challenging part of their trek, 65 miles on one of Alaska's toughest roads. It's all that stands between them and the illegal hunt site. McCarthy Road is just a beaten up, washboarded pothole, just a, just a hellacious road. Once we get off the tire tracks here, you can feel it just tugging on these big wide tires. Imagine doing this for 65 miles at 25 miles an hour. We don't have to imagine. You can experience it firsthand. But before the troopers can reach their site. What the hell? What the hell? Oh, it's dragging. Wow. These are brand new tires they just put on yesterday, Dan. Yeah, I knew that it. thing just blew up. And they lasted all of what? 22 miles in the mud and snow in Alaska? There must be mud and snow tires for, like, Virginia or something. Good morning, huh? We're already behind on time anyways. The sun's almost up, and the troopers are stuck. They must plant their decoy before the hunters come out. But a blown tire could blow their cover. This is going to put a little dampener on our day. NASCAR pit crew, we are not. You might have to crank that up a little bit more, Dan. So much for getting a head start on the hunters. Actually, I just wanted to see what kind of partner Dan was to see if he'd help me. <laughs> but time's not the only thing against them. Wow. This is the last tire we got. I don't know how much farther I can go. I might get another flat. <sighs> just as they're about to get back on the road, Trooper Simeon spots something. Check this out. I don't know what that is. have somebody in front of us and it appears he may have already been out hunting recklessly from the highway you can see where they walked off the road blood yeah probably blasted right out of that tree if you look at these tracks right here i mean it looks like somebody got out because they, they drove past it and backed up to it I he was standing from. Yeah, I would say around here, wouldn't you think? There's snow in the track, so these guys are quite a ways in front of us. But Simeon's optimistic. Evidence that we have hunters out here. You know, we've got somebody out shooting a grouse. We have their tracks on the road and blood underneath a pine tree where shot it out of the tree. So maybe we'll have some takers. Somebody who wants to play if we don't get another flat tire. They still have 20 miles, and the higher they climb, the worse the road gets. Holy moly! And losing control. And this is decent from McCarthy Road. After a 60-minute trek, they finally reach the site and find the perfect spot for a stakeout. 
Simeon stashes his truck and preps a decoy grouse on the edge of the main road. We gotta get it far enough off the road where nobody shoots towards us and far enough off the road so if they do shoot, it'll be in a fairly safe direction because we don't want to deploy it in a spot if there is somebody else coming down the road, so. If you see the tire track, then can't get off the tire track, you'll see my footprint. The bait is set. Now, all they have to do is wait. Yeah, we just need that, that one guy. An opportunist. Yep, an opportunist. Listen. It's only a few minutes before the hunters start coming. They weren't doing shit in the hood. No, they didn't even slow down. Man, they got a bunch of coolers in the back there, too. See what comes along here. What is in the freak? Damn it. An hour passes, still no luck. So Trooper Simeon places his second decoy. I'm gonna try and wire it to a tree. Oh, that's where I'll stick him. Looks like a, like a perfect setup. I mean, with this kind of dull light. Give it a couple more minutes and we'll take off. Suddenly, huh? get after, get after, get after. <laughs> they get a possible taker. The truck matches the description of the roadside shooter they received the report about earlier. I can see the driver's plain as day. You can see he let off the throttle. If somebody was going to shoot, that would have been the person right there. I don't know, maybe he'll turn around and come back. Come back. Just coming back up. Simeon and Dahl move closer to get a better look. Somebody got out. I can see the driver. But the hunter doesn't bite. Boy, somebody came damn close. Now, Toyota that our complainants are saying that they're driving is a Toyota pickup. But I bet you all the other folks leaving have let them know. They don't bag their roadside shooter, but Simeon still knows they made an impression. Just us being out here, hunters knowing there's decoy set up, is going to get the word out. People are going to start thinking about it. It's going to be in the back of their mind. You know, this could be a setup. This could be something to test my integrity. That wasn't a bad setup, though, Dan. It looked good anyway. We just want to make sure the hunters are doing it safe and doing it the right way. Time to go home. Back in the Matsu Valley, troopers track a different type of criminal, a slippery fugitive who may be armed and Trooper Greg Pelletier and K-9 partner Anchor arrive ready for action. And starts for it again. Greg, this is the vehicle. It was for felony evade elude. The uh, complainant said they left out the driver bail out of the car. Took off running. That's who we think it is. He's wanted for uh, you do this from justice. Uh, so we need you to track him. Yeah, I'll be your cover. Okay. Anchor quickly picks up the suspect scent, and the team begins the chase. We got a, a call of a, a felon uh, bailed on foot out of a vehicle. Um, felony warrants. Individual fled on foot. The felon leads them into the wilderness and maybe into a trap. <laughs> it's not long before Anchor spots their man hiding in the brush. Set through the canine. You there in the blue shirt. Show me your hands now. And he won't surrender. Stay true with the canine. You there. Show me your hands now. Stop where you are now and stand still. You may get bit. Hold on. Anchor spots their man hiding in the brush. Stay true with the canine. You there in the blue shirt. Show me your hands now. Stay true with the canine. You there. Show me your hands now. Stop where you are now and stand still. You may get bit. Hold him. Troopers nab their suspect. He's Sergeant Pat Nelson, and this scenario is part of K-9 Anchor's quarterly training exercise. Quit fight my dog. Stand still. Hands up. Good boy. Step away from my dog slowly towards the sound of my voice. I enjoy uh, agitating for the dogs and seeing how the dogs behave and and react to certain scenarios that close up. We try and train our dogs in this particular scenario because it's a realistic scenario that happens. 
you know, on a weekly basis. But overall, uh, good, good job, good tactics. Uh, I thought you did well, the track was really well, and uh, the apprehension did. Sergeant Scott Johnson runs the canine unit for the state. We currently have uh, seven dogs in the state trooper inventory. We try to make it harder in training, and, uh, and the dogs are going to see on the streets so they don't fail. Flip like a boy! But in the northwest corner of Alaska, a partner is luxury. This is the Arctic town of Kotzebue, home to just over 3,000 residents. Its trooper post serves the state's northernmost communities. With snow lingering into July and temperatures that can drop down to 50 below, life in these isolated areas is often a fight for survival. Hey, Richie. Richie, it's Young. What's going on? Trooper Gordon Young's been on the job for five years. He's one of only eight troopers patrolling the 35,000 square mile Arctic borough. This morning, he gets a report of a belligerent woman who's out of control and picking fights. And she's fighting with you now. I'll, gi I'll give you a call back. Goodbye. Okay, just got off the phone with the VPSO in Kayana. Um, we've got a, a gal that's intoxicated, causing trouble, um, fighting with the VPSO, um, fighting with the neighbors. Um, so we're going to run out there and take care of business. The VPSO, or Village Public Safety Officer, is a paid but unarmed officer of the law. When things get too serious, the officer must call in the troopers. But this call isn't down the street. To bring in the feisty fighter, Trooper Young must head off the grid and travel 60 miles east to the small village of Kayana. It's freeze-up time right now, so you can't take snow machine or four-wheeler, and it's too froze to take a boat. This time of year, it's a plane only. It's urgent enough that I need to go out there with her fighting with the VPSO. They do not have firearms at all. They have pepper spray and a taser, and that's it. So we'll, we'll go help them out. This lady, I deal with her quite a bit. The last time I arrested her, she was just intoxicated beyond excess because of trouble. She wouldn't be quiet and wouldn't go home, so taking her to jail was our only option. She was screaming and yelling, beating on the jail cell doors. I see her in the community, and she's fine. But then once in a while, she has to get alcohol. causes trouble with her, her family. I mean, it affects everybody. Alcohol abuse has taken a terrible toll in rural Alaska, and along with drug use, is linked to 9 out of 10 violent crimes. There you go. Watch his head. Okay, thanks. We're going this way. After a 30-minute flight, Trooper Young arrives in the far-flung hamlet. The village public safety officer gives him an update. How's she doing? She's still being obnoxious. Yeah, my license is watching this. Okay, uh, I'll straighten around in about three seconds. What? <sighs> At least Trooper Young knows what he's in for. The woman's out of control in every sense, and as ornery as ever. What's going on? Yay! 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 Hey, quit swearing. Why are you in jail today? What'd you do? Are you, sp are you supposed to be drinking? Say no. Why are you in jail today? What'd you do? Are you, sp are you supposed to be drinking? Say no. You're on probation. You know you're not supposed to be drinking, and then you wouldn't leave this house. You are going to jail. Sorry about that. For what? Criminal trespass and probation revocation. I think. No, only because the VPSO made you leave. Her alcohol level is about a 0.29. That is very high. It's three, four times the legal limit to be even driving a vehicle. So she's having a tough, tough time standing up. Well, you're going to jail today, okay? Back away from the door. Back away from the door. Back away. Back away from the door. Back away from the door and we'll talk. Trooper Young does his best to calm the very drunk, very aggressive villager so he can fly her to jail back in Kotzebue. Go stand over there. You're not going to give us any trouble, are you? No. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. I never do nothing. I, Come on. I just try Here, just... Look out. Come on. Hey, look. Look out. Pull your pants up. Pull your pants up. Yeah, you will. Now, Young is faced with getting this agitated woman to behave herself on the plane back to Kotzebue. We always have concerns with people um, flying on an airplane, especially yeah. drunk people. A few months ago, we had a person attempt to try to take the plane down. We're trying to get to the pilot, so we just doing it that we tasted the gentleman twice. Let's go. Come on. 
Come here. Get in. You're gonna get in. Now you gotta help me. Put your foot up here. Put my foot up there. Right here. Ready? Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Come on, seriously. We gotta go. After a tense 30 minute return flight, nope. they land safely back in Kotzebue. Okay, let's go this way. Or she'll be booked for criminal trespass and probation revocation. You hold on to you so you don't slip. Sometimes I don't know, people just drink too much and they just do things that they normally wouldn't do. And she's got kids that it affects. That kind of frustrates me and I feel sorry for that kid that has to see her mother go to jail because of alcohol. When you're not drinking, you don't cause any trouble, but when you drink, it happens every time. Man, I always drink with the wrong people. Yeah, I guess you do. Trooper Timothy Cronin races across the Matsu Valley to the wreckage of a head-on collision. The female ran into the trees, maybe 55. It's a two-vehicle collision. We've got injuries and we've got a possibly intoxicated driver fleeing. We're going to get there as fast as we can. Cronin hits the gas to catch the fleeing suspect. Suddenly, the call takes an unusual turn. Back on the three, ten, twenty-three. He arrives to a harrowing scene. The driver veered into oncoming traffic. Jeez. But miraculously, no one was seriously injured. Now, Cronin must investigate the driver's behavior before and just after the accident. Apparently, as soon as she got out of the vehicle, she ran into the woods. They said she could have been going to the bathroom, but also she could have known that her vehicle's disabled and that we're on the way, so she might try and stash something. Who saw her run into the woods? Ma'am, did you see her run into the woods? She went into the woods. Did you see where exactly she went in? Right there? Okay, I appreciate it. A clue to what happened might be stashed in the woods. I'm not seeing anything that really sticks out. In these woods, you could hang out all day looking for it. You know, she could have dumped an alcohol container, could have dumped drugs of some kind. You know, she threw a small pipe, a small baggie of dope. Good luck finding it. Then, there's a flask right here. There's a flask right here. The cause of a horrific crash might be hidden in a tossed away flask. How old is it? I don't know. Oh, yeah. That's been there. He returns to the scene empty handed. We found an old flask. That was about it. The problem is there's this big ridge, so she could chuck something up in the brush up above it. We got two troopers who are gonna check and make sure she's not impaired. And uh, but first she's gonna have to get checked out by the ambulance because she hit a uh, F-350 pickup head-on in a small sedan. While EMS checks over the driver, Cronin manages the traffic. Right now our job is pretty much to make sure that no one else comes in the scene and gets hit and makes it worse. Stop! You weren't told to go. You're blocking the ambulance. You need to move back. We weren't here. People just want to make their way through the scene. They don't know that EMS crews are working. Ambulances are about to come down. We don't have the road blocked off for no reason. They rush her to a nearby hospital, and troopers dial in on what went wrong. It looks like she was most likely texting while driving, which is a misdemeanor offense in the state of Alaska. So if they can prove that she was texting while driving and swerved randomly into the oncoming lane and hit that car, then she'll be charged criminally for that. But she's getting off easy. She's lucky to be alive. But across the valley, the residents of the small community of Point McKenzie aren't so lucky. It's about 20 miles out of town. There's a general store, kind of the only store in the area, and it's on fire. The general store is a lifeline in rural areas, so this fire borders on calamity. Even more frightening, it might have been intentionally set. We've obviously got fire coming from several different places, so I gotta assume the fire's real bad if there's multiple fire departments showing up. We've actually had quite a few buildings burning down in the valley, so it's very possible that this is arson. Any updates? Calhoun soon gets word that more than the building's at stake. There's still people inside. The owner lives inside. As far as anyone knows, she was there during the blast. We're 
are still 20 miles away and we're the closest. Trooper Calhoun is ahead of the pack and pushes his Dodge Charger to its limit. Car number one priority is making sure everybody's out of the building and making sure people aren't going back in. But he didn't count on this. Gaslight. He's low on fuel and still miles out. What sucks is my gas level. Calhoun runs on fumes, hoping he makes it. Come on. Map on 29, 10, 23. Fire's also 10, 23. On scene, the fire department works frantically to keep the flames under control and away from the potential bomb just next to them. So those look like propane tanks. They're not blown up yet. There's two of them. It's not that good. If there's smoke and there's people in there still, they're done. Now Calhoun can focus on saving the possible victim trapped inside. So do you know the owner here? Yes. He was upstairs sleeping. When that happened? Yeah. There was an explosion. It was like a propane bottle went Okay. Out. What time did you say it blew? Just minutes before six. Go. Boom! Thanks a lot. They don't know if anyone's still inside. They just know that people typically sleep here. Right now, still no all clear. The rear portion of the, of the building's all burnt up. There's no way in, no way out. To rescue the woman, firefighters must cut through the side of the building. After nearly an hour, they extinguish the flames. I guess there's no one inside, just over there in the car. I don't. Thanks a lot. Luckily, the owner managed to safely escape the building when the fire erupted. That's about as good as it could have gone. It looks like the building's a total loss, but that stuff can be replaced. This store is kind of the only store in the area, so that's going to affect the people who live out in this area. But they'll, they'll rebuild this store in a matter of six months or so, and everything will be back to normal. If a light were to be lost, that's something that will have a long-term effect.